I'd say welcome back to Oz9, but that makes it sound like I'm happy to be here. It also acknowledges that you have a life that goes on when you're not here, you lucky, lucky... <clears throat> Sorry. When we last left... <sighs> Look, do you really need a recap? You could just go back and listen to episode 43 again. Oh, damn it, that stupid contract. Okay. Jesse and LeBichon Frise crammed a powered-down Greg into a cave in the bioswamp. Mrs. Sheffield, Julie, Ben, and Donna were taken prisoner by Tiberius and Felonius and are being frog-marched to their deaths in some tunnels under French Lake, Indiana. The crew in space are trying to figure out if they're in danger, and I think we can all comfortably say the answer is yes. All caught up? Good. Oh, excellent. Did you get the mold samples? Hey, Gotham. Jesus, is that a chin? Colin's coming back. Well, sort of. Bits just keep appearing and disappearing. Well, that's disgusting. And when's the last time you shaved? This morning. I mean your face. Well, obviously. What did you think I meant? Have you ever tried to shave something you can't see? Ever see the underside of your left knee? Well, no. I guess. Men, get over yourselves. The samples. Please. Yeah, right, got them here. Something odd, though. The sides of the mold don't match. Oh no, that poor plant. Calm down, Leet. Symmetry isn't that important to everyone. What do you mean? Leet, it is difficult to talk to Captain Jesse with you standing directly between us. But worth the extra effort, don't you think? What do you mean they don't match? Well, look, this bit came from the right side, and this bit from the left. See how that's dark green, but this side is almost yellow? Did Greg happen to eat from both sides? He did, but hadn't burped up the results when... Uh, when... Uh... Albert interrupted. I took off of the door, but he chased Greg into the woods. Someone needs to save him. What the hell is that? It's his heroic running music! The computer fires it up anytime Leet runs off to save someone. Don't worry, it doesn't happen often. Hey! Can the theme song, Olivia? Greg's fine. Are we sure? He does a lot of ripping when he runs. Please, Olivia. Alright then, but no dashing off without your theme music, dearest. You're right, Jesse. The mycelium of each sample is completely different. Oh! Leet! Why am I being cradled like a baby? It's nice, isn't it? Not really. It's very hard to do science in this position. What if I rock you? How about you put me down for science? Okay. Can you science better now? Yes, he can. Yes. Thank you. We probably ought to find Greg. He could be in trouble. He's made of metal. You don't think Albert's that desperate? I don't think Albert's that discerning. Olivia, get Joe and, uh, the albatross, I guess, to track him down and bring him back, will you? I'll just, uh, toodle along with them, then. I, I could use your help here, Captain Jesse. Uh, I'd like you to describe exactly what you saw. Uh, I didn't see much. Mostly the back end of a zebra. You know, Freeze was in the bio swamp as well. Maybe send him along to look. What was Freeze doing there? Who knows? Probably looking for poison dart frogs to milk for his bloody decongestant bottles. I assure you there are no dendrobatidae here. Uh, glad to hear you're free of dendroph there, mate. Though not sure how that's relevant. If there are no poison dart frogs, what's this? Ah! Where did you find that? Snug as a bug in the mold, actually. I'm pretty sure there was at least one black mamba and a couple of coastal taipans curled up in there as well. What are those? <gasps> Cocktails? Venomous snakes, you bark. That plant is a walking ecosystem of deadly stuff. Interesting. Given the company it's keeping, we should probably give the mold a wide berth for now. And you should wash your hands before you eat anything, Captain Jesse. <laughs> Wait. Please stop petting me. Okay. Anything else, or can I go help find Greg now? I feel a bit responsible since I was with him when the egrets attacked. I thought it was Albert. Oh, uh, him too. They've joined forces, apparently. I'll go with you. Hey, no music? No, she's going with you. I don't have proper hero plus idiot sidekick music. Watch it. I'll come along as well. I'd like to get a closer look at the mold. Do we have any hazmat suits on board? 
<laughs> That's cute. How about you go along too, Colin? Why me? Because if everybody goes but you and me, I'm sorry, but I just can't work with one eye and a bottom lip looking over my shoulder. It's just too creepy. And stop pouting. I'm not pouting. I can see your bottom lip and it is clearly in pout position. Do we really need this many people in the Bayou Swamp? We need Greg. He's our only connection to the people on Earth. What if we don't find him? Honestly, everybody dies. Wait, everybody? How did we get from, ha ha, he's a slide projector, to, if we don't find him, everybody dies? Fine. Well, I can't watch the clown school dropouts running around in the bioswamp with our fragile lives and their clumsy, meaty, thumbless paws. Let's check in with the crowd on Earth and see if they're dead yet. You know, we have a sulfur spring in Minnesota. Oh, sure. Mud bottom. Down there near Jordan. Oh, it's real nice. Listed on the National Register. You have a National Register of excruciatingly dull trivia, do you? Apparently. Mm-hmm. Quiet! Oh, oh, come on, no. It's always nice to find out the things you have in common. We have nothing in common. By noon, I will be dining in the summer room, sipping champagne from crystal stemware, eating roasted duck from a plate created by Brunello Cuccinelli. You will be dead. See, no, there's another thing we have in common. And what is that? We each think the other one will be dead by lunchtime. Funny how the world works, don't you think? What is she doing? Well, Ben, I'd say she was threatening him, but it's so hard to tell with Minnesotans. I mean, they are relentlessly pleasant. Always. Glenda! Where? Well, no, not here. But maybe soon? She could save us. From what I've heard, I wouldn't count on it. She's not the saving type. Plus, it's a long drive from the nearest zoo. When we get out of here, I really want to know why you think she's at the zoo. Oh, trust us, Ben. You really don't. And uh, I'm afraid Julie is correct. We, we just can't count on Glenda. Damn it. I heard them say something about the others. It didn't sound good. I've heard them use that phrase a few times since I've been here, usually followed by nervous laughter and occasional signs of the cross. I said, be quiet! Oh, come on. What a waste of good acoustics. How much farther down are we going? Until I say stop. Ned, you remind me of my cousin Ned. Is is Donna entirely sane, do you think? And, uh, just a little question. Are all Minnesotans so... Resourceful? Does it matter? We're about to die. We can't die. I am not letting your mother raise my child. And just how am I like this Ned of yours? Well, two ways. One, he has a real nice singing voice. I suspect you do too. I can tell from the diaphragmatic control behind all that shouting. I am classically trained, actually. Beautiful dream awaken. Good God! That was close. And the other way I resemble this Ned fellow? Oh, I'll keep that to myself for now. I believe you mean you'll take it with you to your grave. Halt! This is as far as I go. Guard, carry on until you see the blood stains, then blow your whistle to bring the others. <sighs> Understood. Yes, sir. Then back the way I came? <laughs> oh, yes, um, yes, uh, back the way you came. Certainly. On you go now. Beautiful dream. They took our phones. We can't even communicate with the Ozna. What could they possibly do from space? I don't know. Beam us up? Oh, Ben, 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 even if they could, I do you imagine you'd be any safer there? <laughs> oh, I didn't think so. You know, Dr. Von Harbersetzer used to work here not long ago. You know the doc? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. 
yes, a, 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 bit, a bit, in, uh, in uh, cordially, <laughs> in, uh, in, in, in passing, not at all biblically or anything rumpy. <clears throat> do, do you know him? Do oh, sure. He spent a lot of time down here. He was the only one to come down the tunnels this far and make it out alive. Yes, you might want to uh, think about that for a moment or two. Guard. Seven. Team. Uh, sure. Okay. Why? What are you thinking, Mrs. Sheffield? What am I thinking? Hmm. That Dr. Von Habersetzer always builds in an escape hatch. Like the 30-minute grace period for the apocalypse device. You think there might be a way out of this? Oh, I suspect so, Ben. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled, girls and boys. It's almost pitch black. Well, yes, quite. Yeah, almost. But not completely. Hmm. Why not? I mean, there are no lights, no torches, certainly no windows this deep underground. It's the walls. Oh, You're right. It's mold. It's mold covering the walls. It's bioluminescent mold. Radioactive, actually. Scientists brought it here from Chernobyl because it eats radioactive stuff. They wanted to line spaceships with it, but it turns out it just makes a better flashlight. It's super dangerous, though, so anyone working in the tunnels has to wear a special suit. Huh. Do they? God, 72. Sure do. Mm, but not this time, hmm? No? No suit for you? Ah, guess mm. not. I'm super glad, though. It's really hot in here. Hmm. Did anybody hear that? Did you ever come down here with the dark? Yeah, just one time, and we didn't come down this far. Did you see him doing anything strange or unexpected? You know, come to think of it, I did. About every six feet, he'd dig a little hole in the wall and stick something in it. Okay, everyone, start looking. The mold will have grown over it by now, so feel around. If this is radioactive... Should we be touching it? It's not. It's ordinary Pinellas stipticus. It's naturally bioluminescent. Von Abersetz are lied to me? Oh, yes, one thing you should always remember. The doctor lies. There's that sound again. Seriously, nobody hears it but me? Hey, I found something. Me too. What is it? It's a firework. <laughs> the kind we told Maggie not to throw at the cows, remember? They bang and make a bright flash when they hit something hard enough? Okay, now, I think we should put those back and move along. I feel really sorry about this, but I gotta lead you to your deaths and hightail it out of here. Yes, we still haven't quite cottoned on, have we? Hmm? Now, see, you're not leaving here either, right? I'm not? No. Oh, heck no. Think about it. Just one guard with no weapon, no special suit. Bet they didn't set you a place at the dinner table. B but I work here. I'm one of the guys, not not you guys. I I'm the feeder, not the feedy. Yeah, I believe the word you want is food. And yeah, you are one of the baddies, guard 72. But do you really believe the others know the difference? Mm -hmm. Hey, help us find more of these, and we'll all get out of here. <laughs> Those sounds are definitely getting closer. How do you think it works? They're afraid of the noise, or the flash, or both, right? It's gotta be. Worth a shot. <laughs> How about we start heading back the other way? <laughs> Fast. We can grab more of these as we go. Firecrackers? We have fire crackers. Look, I've heard the screams. Lots and lots of screams. You think stupid little firecrackers you give to your kid are gonna scare them? Oh, come on! Tell me you heard that! Yes, we've been hearing it all along, Ben. We just, you know, don't like to dwell on it. Come on, let's move. Everyone, at a trot. Come on, eat up. Use that mother bird. Off the earth. Oh no! Oh my god! Look at that! Jesus, she's a jolly! There, 
I see daylight. Go, go, go. The guard. He fell. Keep moving, Ben. I reckon the only thing left of him are those bed wings. I'm out of firecrackers. We're not going to make it. Benjamin, are you dead yet? No. No, have I ever let you be killed? Well, no. Then do calm down. You young people have no faith. When did you get so cynical? Was it when chips became illegal? I don't know. Anyway, get behind me, everyone. What are you doing? MI-18 hasn't left me without a thing or two up my sleeve. Or oh, on my cane. <laughs> Behold. That's it? The light on top of your cane is... fluorescent? It's working, isn't it? Well, yeah, but it's hardly Gandalf, is it? What are those things? I see flowers, but also spines. Glow kids. Pilius? Anulus? Trigger hairs? And Are those gills? Oh, like a mushroom! No, like a fish! They're really big carnivorous plants that are even bigger and wilder than the ones in the greenhouse. I'm guessing as a botanist, they're very interesting, but given what just happened to the guard, maybe we head on out, okie doke. What's it doing now? Yes, I am. Um, I do hate to be your doom and gloom, but uh, I think uh, it's preparing to strike. <laughs> So, calm and still, everyone. <laughs> calm and still. I made it! I'm alive! <laughs> oh my god! Holy crap! Okay, okay. Oh god, that was bad. That was really, really ugly with blood and bits flying around bad. Oh man, be glad you couldn't see that. It was like someone flew a helicopter in there. Just chaos and spraying blood and hair and teeth and arms and pieces and... Oh, okay. Okay. A deep breath. Oh, find your diaphragm. Relax the larynx. Drop the epiglottis. Smooth and creamy, smooth and creamy, avocado yogurt. Okay. Whew. Well, folks, until things calm down and we have a better idea of what just happened in there, I think we'll look in on the ship. Oh, oh, Albert, wait, oh, my wait. Oh, Albert, stuck oh, in my back. What the hell? Is nowhere safe for narration? Avocado yogurt, avocado yogurt, avocado yogurt. Wait, Albatross is standing just outside the door to the bioswamp, talking to herself? No, hang on, I, I see an ear and a sideburn, maybe an ankle? Oh my god, this day has been all about body parts. Just parts. Should we go in and help them? I have sworn a sacred trust to protect this ship's passengers and crew. That said, Jesse and the Freeze are from the 6748. Joe isn't actually a real person, and Dr. Theo was part of a plot to keep the Oz-9 from fulfilling its mission. I'm not feeling any particular urgency here. I'm a real passenger. Mm, you are. Well, pieces of one, anyway. I'm all here, I assure you. All right, then I'll protect you by remaining on this side of the door. I'm very glad. Thank you. Certainly. Ooh! Did Leet just lose an ear? His own? No, the one he borrowed from Joe yesterday. Of course his own! Oh, never mind. It was just that bit of sandwich he insists on tucking behind his ear. <laughs> well, if anything can slow Albert down, that would be it. It's the perfect microcosm of life aboard the Oz-9, isn't it? Chaos, shouting, and imminent, utterly stupid death. 
We're not going to survive this, are we? Oh, I don't know. Ignorance and denial have gotten us surprisingly far. Life is a slow but relentless assassin, Colin. Perhaps it's best to just enjoy it while you have it. Enjoy this? Why not? Albert is currently burping up froth from Leeds Sandwich, and Jesse face-planted in some quite rancid-looking bog water. <laughs> it's not completely without amusement value. Or you can just stare at Dr. Theo. Do you miss her? Miss whom? Oh, Glinda. Yes. Sometimes I think I don't, but then I realize I've taken four ibuprofen to rid me of heartache. It's been so long now, I don't always know where the pain is coming from. It's an improvement of sorts. Colin? I have to tell you... Whatever are we watching with such fascination? Oh, goodness. That is a kerfuffle. Oh, hello, Doctor. We're either watching a rerun of the Three Stooges or our shipmates being devoured by an alligator. <laughs> Has anyone been poked in the eyes yet? This is how I usually tell the difference between the idiots and the Stooges. Nearly everyone but Albert should be wearing a cone. But that's no help. Olivia... It's not my fault. Are you sure? Depends. What's gone wrong this time? All is fair, child. Just lower the temperature in the swamp and turn on the sprinklers. Gators are not fond of cold, rainy days. Which is perhaps why there are so few of them running around wild in Seattle, hmm? <laughs> the joke. God in him. Time and a place, Dr. V. Time and a place. <laughs> ah, see, there we go. He will be heading back to his burrow now for a little snooze. Cold and rain, of course. Why didn't we think of that? I did. Doctor, you've seen our plants before, haven't you? What makes you think that? Everyone else's heart rate sped up the minute they laid eyes on those things. Except the doctor's. Uh, I had forgotten about that. You know, you were to reserve these functions for the Vutrima columns. Hieroglyphics? Calisthenics. Doctor? Yes, yes, you are right. Two of those big fellows, they are all right. They are benign, benevolent, healing plants, like a very, very big aloe vera. The last one, though, on Earth, ones like that big guy were called the Uzzels. Other than what? The... Uh, <laughs> that is a very good question, to which I have no answer. Come on, speed it up. Ah, hello, Liebchen. Please to bring the temperature back up in this farm before there is damage to the ecosystem. Already on it. Keep talking. Very well. As far as we were able to tell, the others are the originals. You mean the original travelers? From space? My god, how old are they? Oh, thousands and thousands of years, maybe more. Their numbers and our numbers are not the same numbers, so there is some confusion, you see. Most of the plants there are descendants. A little naughty-naughty with the local plant life, a little stoop and tickle, a little natural evolution, and poof. They are different from their forebearers. How can that be? I thought Leeds grew them all from seeds. Well, the other two, yes, absolutely, but uh, this one, it was on the ship all along. But why? My god. What? What is it? It's hitching a ride. We're taking it home. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. In an alien stowaway plant took over control of my spaceship sort of way. So why would the alien want to return to a war-torn and destroyed planet? Has it received messages from home that all's well? If so, why didn't the other others stow away on ships as well? And what, if anything, do Tiberius and Mr. Southers know about this? Or for that matter, Dr. Von Habesetzer? Seriously, does anyone have any answers? Screw the end credits, what happens next? I don't care about the contract! Oh, fine. 
You've been listening to David S. Deer as Dr. Theo Brome, Bonnie Brantley as Jesse and Donna, Richard Cowan as Leet, Tim Sherburn as Colin, Shannon Perry as Madeline and Olivia, Sarah Golding as Mrs. Sheffield, Erie Alexander as Julie, Kevin Hall as Felonius, Aaron Clark as Ben, June Clark Eubanks as the Albatross, Eric Perry as Dr. Von Hobbitzetzer, with special guests Scotty Moore as the guard, and me, Richard Nadolny, as your narrator. Oz9 is written and produced by Shannon Perry. This episode was directed by June Clark Eubanks. Our music is composed and performed by John Faley. Our artwork is by Lucas Elliott. Thanks to our new sponsor, Minucci Consulting. And a special announcement. We're inviting patrons to come along for a live read-through with the cast of Oz9 in October. If you'd like to be on the guest list, join our Patreon at any level. The live read-through has limited spaces available, so don't wait too long. Patreon.com slash Oz9Podcast, all one word. See you in two weeks, Space Monkeys. Narrator out. So, Captains, am I to understand that you didn't actually hire your own crews? Damn straight. What a disaster. She ended up with a crew that couldn't scrape together one reasonable IQ among them. And my crew tried to kill me. A ship is kind of like a business. You need experts. Like, your IT guy should really be able to identify a computer, especially if you point at it and say, that's a computer. And they should probably wear a shirt. I'm okay with a more casual dress code, but next time we are going with Minucci Consulting. Ooh, who's fancy pants now, eh? Minucci Consulting? Oh yeah, they do outsource business admin and consulting. You're in space, they're on Earth. Doesn't get much more outsourced than that. Hush. Basically, they get your business over hurdles, whether that's staffing, managing finances, streamlining office operations, setting up your benefit structure. Streamlining office operations? You have no clue what you're saying, do you? Well, no, but I don't have to. Minucci Consulting does. They offer expertise in all areas of business administration, you know? Okay, well, that's great information. Thank you, Captains. Yeah, thanks for helping us make an ad sound like it's part of the show. Damn it, Jesse. What? Oh, like they couldn't tell. Pfft. You forgot the URL, by the way. M-I-N-U-C-C-I consulting.com. And five hours free consulting if you're willing to admit you listen to Oz9. Just mention us when you make contact. Willing to admit? What the hell does that mean? The oh, whole maybe time Minucci can get an can get us You have to be able like to get Hey guys, my name's Kenan. I'm the Dungeon Master of Top of the Round. We are an original and fully produced sandbox style D&D 5e actual play podcast that prioritizes roleplay and storytelling. Come with us to Ishnar, a dark world filled with secrets, history, and lore. Wait, are people listening to us? Hi, people. I, 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 Where are the people? I don't know. I don't see them. I don't see them either. People! Where are they? Oh my god, we have to find them! My crossbow is ready. Are you sure we need to find these people? Or will they find us? Show yourselves! I'm not sure how I know this, but you can find us where you find podcasts? Whatever those are. Mondays? What day is it? Don't know.